Hi, I'm Aurelie from Naughty Spot, 206 Hot Street. We are open on Friday night. I'm here at New Venture Institute for Entrepreneur in Conversation, and I'm here to tell you my story. The two lessons I've learned in having my own business is number one, shit happens, and number two, if you want to start your own business, uh, start far away from uh, your home country, so if you screw it up, no one is going to know about it. So if you want to hear about my story, just uh, watch this video and I uh, hope you enjoy it. I'd like you to tell us a bit about your journey so far, perhaps, and kind of, you know, if people kind of say necessity is the mother of innovation, um, and I think that might have shaped a bit of how you got here today. That's right. I arrived in Australia um, seven years ago. Um, I arrived here hoping I would actually find a job. Uh, when I left Belgium, um, I was uh, working for L'Oreal as a product manager, and I thought it would be quite easy to find a job um, arriving in Sydney. And I basically couldn't find a job uh, like for one year. Um, I had studied uh, commerce. Um, I had done a bachelor and a, a master in commerce. Um, and I specialized in tax and um, entrepreneurship, basically. So, um, and I was also passionate about food. So um, when I got to Australia and I couldn't find a job, um, I came across basically um, people who wanted to sell a waffle company. And I thought, um, well, why not? You know, um, I've always dreamed of having my own company and I was passionate about food, plus it was a Belgian product, so it kind of made sense. Um, and so that's how it all started, really. So suddenly you're now the owner of a waffle company. That's right. Um, what happens now? <laughs> <laughs> so I was in Australia for like less than a year and I was the owner of a waffle company. <laughs> Um, I barely could speak English properly um, and understand people on the phone was really hard. Um, yeah, I had no idea how business worked here, how accounting worked. Like I had the learning curve was like quite impressive because you you don't have a choice. Like you have to make it work. You have mm -hmm. to learn really quickly um, if you don't want to go bankrupt and just put your company down. Yeah, it was just learning every day and just making it work. Like working really hard. Uh, like crazy hours um, and making a lot of mistakes as well. Um, I think my, my first meeting um, was with the executive chef of the convention center in Sydney and I had no idea what I was going into. Like I had never had a meeting like that before and the guy just asked me questions. I, yeah, I was just pretty confused of what to answer. Um, and. Yeah, weirdly enough, he actually gave me the contract. So it's like, yes. <laughs> Suddenly you're, you've gone from a corporate role mm -hmm. to being accountant, cook, packer, um, customer service person. Yeah, it's, um, it's tough. <laughs> <laughs> it's really tough. Yeah. Um, but it was really enjoyable as well because um, I'm someone who gets really quickly bored. Um, before L'Oreal, I was actually working for a dairy company, uh, Danone, no one knows it here, but, um, and I left after one year because I was not learning anything. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, learning is really important for, for me. Um, I have to, to be excited every day to uh, do new things and discover, you know, the reality of, of having your own business. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was never boring. Never boring. Every day had his, its new problems and its new issues, and and it became a, a game, like more or less at the end, to mm -hmm. how to resolve the problem, basically. So problems don't scare you. At the beginning, it was quite upsetting. I was like, oh god, what what's going to happen next? What's going to be tomorrow like? And and then when you realize that you know shit happens, like it does, <laughs> <laughs> and when you take that as the base, then you are not surprised anymore. You know it's going to happen. And basically it becomes, you know, a game with yourself to, you know, keep calm and not being frustrated and just, yeah, like taking it with a lot of humor, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then you slowly get into, um, like you understand that it's not only passion that makes you, like, that drives you every day. There needs to be more than that. There needs to be more, like, commitment. Mm -hmm. um, and you try to find support as well from wherever you can. Um, 
which which I didn't really have because my all my family is in Belgium, so I had to make make it work without any support, any family, and that's really tough. So um, yeah, if if I had to give an advice to anyone who wants to start a company, do it in your home country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> would you do it again? Yes, I would. You would. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You learn through that process that kind of shit happens, that <laughs> mistakes right. are going to happen every day and things aren't mm -hmm. going to work. How's that helped you today? What, I mean, let's flip right forward to Naughty Spot, for example. With Naughty Spot, um, I've got a wonderful business partner as well, which really helps if you know you want to start a business. I really recommend that you choose your um, business partner wisely, and communication is really important. Um, and uh, Magenta is brilliant because communication is great with her. We've got our differences, we've got our fights, um, but we always hug at the end and we, uh, we make it work. Um, and that's, that's a great thing. Mm -hmm. So honesty is a really big part of how you operate and kind of opening up to your other people inside the business so they become kind of part of the business? Definitely. That... Transparency, I think, is the key. Um, whether it's with your um, business partners or even your employees, um, maybe your suppliers as well, I guess. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, transparency is really important because uh, I think that really um, drive people. Um, it makes them commit more to um, your passion and your business and what you're doing. And they're embracing your values actually um, when you're really open with them and tell them, you know, how it is. Yeah. So they understand better and they feel part of, you know, part of the family. And, and how about hard work in the process? Is there any substitute for it? Is there any easy way around it? I don't think so. I think you need to realize, if you start your own business, that if someone is staying until midnight or has to be there you know, until the morning, you will be the one doing that, you and your business partner. Yes, definitely. <laughs> no one is going to you know, come and tap on your shoulder and say, hey, you know, don't worry, just go to bed, I'll do it. It's not happening. <laughs> you need to you know, be passionate in, enough about your ideas and believe you know, in what you do. Um, to, to make it work, basically. Do, do you have any mentors? It's important to have that kind of contact. Um, people who are completely independent from your business, from your environment, or from your friends, and that are actually seeing the situation like more in a neutral way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's quite important because it makes you realize sometimes that, uh, you know, like I'm being really dumb here. I shouldn't, you know, uh, I should just back off and, and apologize or just you know, um, think about it in a different way. So those people are quite important and yeah, you should, yeah, cherish them and, you know, make sure that they stay there along the way with you. It's kind of like a bit of a buzzword, isn't it, innovation? And when you look at even some of the things that you're doing, um, you wonder, not necessarily taking away from what you're doing, but you wonder how innovative they are. You don't have to really do amazing things to innovate, do you? You can do some things that are different and following your passion, it yes, can be definitely. equally as innovative, if not more. Yeah, than definitely. What other people are doing. Um, I think um, starting a successful successful business is not necessarily coming up with, you know, the idea or you know the revolutionary thing of the year. Um, sometimes it's just yeah, being passionate enough to just um, think differently and launch something that everyone is doing, but do it better. Yeah. Um, or come with another angle. Um, that's, that's what we're trying at Notice What to do every day. Just, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're just trying to do what we do and do it well. And be passionate about what we do. A guy called Norman Pearl said, if you put, put off everything until you're sure of it, you'll get nothing done. That is completely right. I totally agree 100%. <laughs> just, um, yeah, especially with, with Magenta, um, it's not really about, you know, being sure it's the right idea. It's just like, you know, uh, is, this, is this a good idea or is it driving us enough for us to make it work? Is this fun? Yeah. Like, that's how we started Notice Spot, really. Um, we were kind of bored with what we were doing and we're like, you know what, let's, you know, let's open a cafe. And we did everything like in 12 weeks, we had found a place, we had renovated everything and we opened. 
So we've really driven into, you know, action and making things happen, I think, yeah. At your funeral, what would you most like to overhear someone say about you? Um, that I lived free, I guess. Um, as in free of um, pressure, free of... Um, like ideas, as in, you know, like um, some people are not going into business because of what their friends or their family or society is going to think. Uh, I've never lived with that kind of pressure. And it's even more true that I left Belgium and I don't really have my family behind who is going to tell me off if I do the wrong things. So I, I really feel free of that kind of family mm -hmm. pressure, but also I feel also free um, like with the society because it's kind of not my home country, so I'm like, oh, you know, if I fail, well, it doesn't really matter. Whereas if I was in Belgium, I think I would be really scared <laughs> thinking like, oh my God, if I, you know, if I screw this, everyone is going to look at me and everyone is going to know. Here, like, no one knows me, so it's, <laughs> it's kind of all right. <laughs>